All right. Okay. So starting from catecholamine again. Catecholamine, as in amine suggests a name that it has amino acids, right? And catechol is a, another structure. So what exactly, which chemicals come under this category are dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, right? If you look at dopamine, all right, this is the neurotransmitter which makes you happy. Um, so this is good for motivation. It has working memory, all right, and clarity. So it gives you alertness. This is the benefit of it. Norepinephrine makes you recall memory, preservance, execution. So it makes you active, see, vigilant. It increases your concentration. Serotonin, it has satisfaction, okay? It gives you pleasure, relaxation, learning memory and all that. I tell you one thing, it's very funny actually. Uh, when I was doing pharmacy and uh, when we studied this serotonin that increases the learning memory, we literally tried to search it on net if we could take these medicines during exam and uh, you know we could increase our memory and get a four GPA instantly uh, by studying in like a, a night or a few, for a week. So we searched it and when, while we were searching, we got to know some other students of uh, DNC, uh, like two years before, uh, it was in 2008 when we studied this uh, uh, pharmacology. So what happened? Uh, uh, like this subject of, okay, of neurotransmitters, I studied in 2008. So what happened, um, when we were searching, we got to know two years before, DMC students did that, and uh, uh, they were found unconscious in their hostel, and then the entire you know, uh, treatment was given off. All right, so don't do that, if anybody has the way of thinking that I have. Okay, anyways, so serotonin, okay, uh, it gives you a learning memory, but if you take artificial serotonin, so it has some uh, after effects as well, which you'll be studying, I think, in the next year. Anyways, uh, right now we are going to talk about dopamine and uh, the dopamine event you're going to study next year. But since we were talking about um, neurotransmitters, so I think it would be injustice if I leave these two, my favorite neurotransmitters away. So I will be talking about it and I want you to learn it. Uh, okay, even my uh, MPhil is on dopamine, all right? Anyways, so the norepinephrine, all right? This norepinephrine, um, it makes you alert and everything, okay? So, <coughs> all right, sorry guys. Uh, catechol amine. Catechol is this ring. It has two OH. That's why we have ol, right? Alcohol wala ol, ol here. And here we have a ring chain structure. And along with its side, we have ethyl amine as a side chain. Now let's see. Okay, before we see how it looks like, I want to talk about its production. The catecholamines, which majorly uh, ha has uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine. It is produced in the medulla of the adrenal gland. In the medulla, there are chromaffin cells which produces epinephrine and norepinephrine. And as a result, kidneys, uh, sorry, and as a result, cardiac output is, is increased, blood pressure is increased, Pupils are dilated, skeletal blood flow increases, and blood sugar also increases. If you look here, here, here it's alpha and here it's beta written. I want you to see it, but I don't want you to go into the depth right now because my topic is neurotransmitters and not the receptors for the class today. Now, we were discussing about the differences between adrenaline and noradrenaline. Adrenaline helps you in a rush situation, 
in a fright or flight situation, right? So this is the gland, which increases blood circulation, breathing, and carbohydrate metabolism and prepares muscles for exertion, right? So when I sit on this roller coaster, definitely it would come in my mind that maybe there would be some technical issues and maybe I can fall off. So my body would be prepared to deal with any emergency situation. So that's how adrenal would be secreted from the adrenal gland. When we talk about noradrenaline, so this is the hormone released by adrenal medulla and sympathetic nerves and function as a neurotransmitter. It is also used as a drug to raise blood pressure. Now, their ways actually differ. Even though this also increases blood pressure, and here also, you see circulation increase and everything. So here also, blood pressure would be increased. Both of them are doing the same thing, but their ways is different. Now, this is extensively produced by medulla of the adrenal gland. And here, it is produced by the medulla of the adrenal gland and SNS. Synthesized from noradrenaline, synthesized from dopamine. In the upcoming slides, I have the proper synthesis, so don't worry about it. Okay, skipping this, skipping this, because we will talk about it later. Come on the last one. So four effects. If I sit on this roller coaster, I will shout, and then my heart rate would increase, contractility would be there, relaxation of breathing tube, uh, increase in blood pressure, and of course, uh, uh, because of vasoconstriction, okay then increase in blood sugar levels however if i take noradrenaline so what would happen the vasoconstriction would be there which would increase the blood pressure okay <coughs> okay here we want to talk about how dopamine is produced how noradrenaline is produced how adrenaline is produced before I talk about this thing, I want you to look in the very corner and spot this here, the structure of phenylalanine. Wait, phenylalanine. See, it has a ring chain. It has CH2, NH2, which makes it amine, and the entire structure is in front of you. If you compare it with this structure, so this is tyrosine and it has an OH here, which makes it a catapult. Okay, anyways. So what happens is this, tyrosine hydroxylase. Whenever you see this term, hydroxylase, A's means enzyme, hydroxy is the hydroxyl group. It means that an OH group is added and that's how our catechol ring is produced. And the side chain of ethylamine is here, so that makes it what? Catecholamine. So this is dupa, and this undergoes decarboxylation. When we talk about decarboxylation, it means that it removes carbon dioxide, like this carbon dioxide would be removed. COO is removed, and this hydrogen attaches here making it this and now this is dopamine my favorite chemical okay then what happens is this <clears throat> dopamine beta hydroxylase is an enzyme which attaches hydroxide here and converts it into noradrenaline and then Methyl transferase is another enzyme which attaches methyl group on the side chain. You see here, right? So adrenaline has one more methyl group attached to noradrenaline. Noradrenaline has one hydroxyl group attached to dopamine and dopamine is produced from tyrosine. Right, everybody? You see tyrosine? is converted into dupa, dopamine, packed into vesicle, vesicle released. What? Picture. 
<clears throat> okay, so you see here within the uh, neuron, we have this monoamine oxidase, which eliminates dopamine by converting into dopac. And here also there is another enzyme which we are going to talk about. Wait, here. You see, this is COMT and this is MOA, MAO, sorry. This MAO is monoamine oxidase. And this COMT here is catechol O methyl transferase. So what these are two, uh, two enzymes which degrades dopamine. All right. And as a result, this dopamine by the action of COMT is being converted into 3-MT, that is 3-methoxytriamine. And this is this by the action of MAO, which is monoamine oxidase. It degenerates it into dopac, which is 3,4-dry-hydroxyphenyl acetic acid. And when dopac has action of COMT, is being converted into HVA, which is homovanillic acid. And when this 3-MT is uh, uh, faces MAO, which is monoamine oxidase, so this is converted into HVA. Clear everybody? So these are the metabolites of dopamine, which are excreted. Okay, rate limiting step. I'm sure over here you saw this rate limiting step, right? So this is the basically, of course, when tyrosine is not abundant, so obviously dopamine would be affected. So this is the rate limiting step, right? Action of tyrosine hydroxylase is the rate limiting step. The main termination of uptake for the monomines is presynaptic reuptake. Monomine A and catechol, uh, this COMT is also the uh, blockers or degenerators of uh, dopamine. Let's talk more. GABA. Uh, so far, when I talk about acetylcholine, uh, automatically it comes in my mind that positivity is created, sodium is in flux, and then excitation is there. Now this GABA is actually inhibitory in nature. When I say inhibitory, it means that it is becoming more and more negative, right? Okay, it is becoming more and more negative, right? So the action potential reaches, as a result, GABA is released from the vesicles. It attaches here, and in the previous videos, when sodium was influxed, excitation was there but when chlorine is in flux inhibitory effect is there so what happens hyperpolarization happens here you can relate to your uh, test which i took so hyperpolarization means more and more negative is there right so th why this is becoming more and more negative because of the influx of chloride ions this is how the GABA receptor looks like. It has five pen pentameric structure. And here, you don't actually have to memorize it now, you just have to see it, that this is the name of GABA receptor, which have two alpha, two beta, and one gamma, all right? And you see, alpha accounts for the action of ethanol, this beta, accounts for the action of uh, neurosteroids and barbiturates. This gamma here is accountable for the action of benzodiazepine. Okay, now coming up to serotonin. Wait a minute. Okay. Now coming up to serotonin, I wonder why I did not produce a introductory slide. Anyways, so serotonin. Uh, instead of talking about the serotonin effects, I here placed a slide which can tell you about the serotonin deficiency, what it 
it would do in your body. It would produce anxiousness, worryfulness, panic, phobias, mental obsessions, behavioral compulsions, pain, depressed moods, PMS, post-menstrual uh, menopausal symptoms, sleep cycle disturbances, GI stress, carbohydrate cravings. So you see, when, but again, that does not mean that you should take serotonin medications on your own. This has some serious, serious negative impact. So just don't take these medications on your own till the doctor prescribes you. That, okay, fine, Ms. Pfizer told us that a depressed mood, anxiousness, yes, I'm worried. I should go for serotonin agonist medicines. No, it's not that, okay? Don't take any medication on your own. All right, so how it works. Earlier for dopamine, we talked about tyrosine is there. For serotonin, we have tryptophan. So what happens is this, it gets into the neuron, is being converted, packed into the vesicle, released, and then produces the action. Now, if you see here, the serotonin, all right, has, uh, which kind, I'm sure you all must have noticed this snake-like thing here, right? This is what? This is G protein coupled receptor. And here, if you see, this is GI, GQ, GS. Now, what is that? We'll talk about it, right? Okay. <coughs> now, S stimulates, I is inhibitory. Wait, I have a diagram here for you. A table, not diagram, sorry. So, these are the second messengers that would be produced by serotonin. And what are, where are they? And what are their pathways? Let's talk about it. GS would be beta adrenergic receptors, glucagon, histamine, serotonin. Signaling pathway, it would increase cyclic AMP. It means it will have excitatory effect. GI has alpha adrenergic receptors, opioid, serotonin, and it will decrease CA, CMP, cardiac potassium channel open, decrease heart rate. GQ, GQ, it is MACHR, H1, alpha-1, vasopressin type 1, um, serotonin, this 5-HT. Uh, I'm not going into the depth of it, because this is my second lecture, okay? All right, so signaling pathway is Okay, so signaling pathway is that it would increase the cytoplasmic calcium. How? By increasing in all, uh, uh, <coughs> the every, everything that I've, uh, I've mentioned here. Guys, I will respond to your questions in a while, okay? Just give me some while. Okay, then there's GT, which is rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is actually a pigment within the uh, retina code rod, rod cells, all right? Rod and cone cells. So this is how we get to see the colors. So it increases cyclic GMP, phosphodiesterase, and it decreases uh, cyclic GMP in the concentration. Uh, okay, everybody. So that is all for today. Thank you so much.